Roses for Valentine's Day. Dedicated to Cecilia, who kindly supports Story Nori on Patreon. Hello, this is Jana, and this is one of my favourite times of the year, Valentine's Day. Such a sweet season. Spring on the way here in England, and a few snowdrops pointing their pretty heads through the grass. And of course, February the fourteenth is marked as the most romantic day of the year. So to celebrate, I'm here with two romantic fables by the ancient Greek writer Aesop. The first is called the Rose and the Butterfly. A butterfly once fell in love with a beautiful rose, and if the truth be told. The rose rather fancied the butterfly. He was very handsome indeed, with wings powdered in a charming pattern of gold and silver. And so, when he fluttered near and told the rose how he loved her, she blushed rosily and said she loved him back. For a while, they were happy, spending all their free time together, and never thought of anyone else. The butterfly would whisper sweet words of nothing in the rose's petals, and the rose replied, "My, my, Mister Butterfly, I do declare your sweet words could charm the morning dew right off the honeysuckle." They exchanged solemn vows to love no one else but each other. No need for tears; I will soon return. Never doubt that you are my one true love," he said as he left. But alas, it was a long time before he came back. Is this what you mean by one true love? She exclaimed tearfully. It has been ages since you went away, and all that time. You have been carrying on with all sorts of flowers. I saw you kiss Miss Orchid, and I saw you were fluttering hopelessly around Miss Mignonette, until Bumblebee chased you away. I wish he had stung you. Ha! One true love," laughed Mister Butterfly. "I had no sooner left you." Then I saw the westerly breeze, Mister Zephyr, blowing you kisses. You were giggling coyly with Mister Bumblebee, and you made eyes at every single bug you could see. You can't expect it, dear one, true love, from me. And the moral is. Do not expect to be loved with all of someone's heart, unless you love them with all of yours. Ah,、oh, that story started so sweetly, and it ended with a harsh but true lesson. Like most of Aesop's tales, it's quite short. So I asked Bertie if he could find a second romantic fable for us. Well, it isn't easy finding Aesop stories about love. Most are about scheming animals like wolves that gobble up lambs or foxes that trick birds into becoming their lunch. But I did come across a tale featuring a rose. Another one. It's originally called the Rose and the Amaranth. Amaranth means everlasting flower, but these days not many people have heard of it. So we are using another name it goes by, which is pigweed. And the story is called the Rose and the Pigweed. Thank you, Bertie. I mean, amaranth sounds more romantic than pigweed, but okay. I'm really looking forward to reading that story in just over a minute's time, so don't go away. But first, it's time to catch up with our sponsor, Wandry, and their new podcast, The Adventures of Cairo. Meet Cairo Carter. He's a curious and friendly seven-year-old who's determined to navigate life in the big city. From Wandry, the adventures of Cairo bring you stories about kindness, safety, courage, and why division homework is the worst. 
In his first adventure, Cairo and his friends can't contain their excitement when the school field trip to the aquarium is announced. But after doing some extra chores around the house to earn money for the trip, he's tempted to buy some super cool slime with his new earnings instead. Whenever Cairo feels a little lost, he can always depend on his family, his friends and his community to help him learn and have tons of fun along the way. Because sometimes being seven is hard work. What we love about this podcast is that it has a friendly, kind-hearted and nicely chilled vibe. Listen to The Adventures of Cairo on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, or you can listen ad-free and early right now by subscribing to Wondery Plus Kids in Apple Podcasts or Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. And now on with the next story. The romantically entitled The Pigweed and the Rose. Thank you, Bertie. A rose, young, beautiful and proud, grew alongside a common pigweed. Often, passers-by stop to gaze at the bright colours of the rose's petals. And quite often, people breathed in her delicate fragrance. And it wasn't unusual for people to pay her compliments like, Such a lovely rose, so very enchanting. But seldom, if ever, would anyone notice the poor, ordinary pigweed. The rose held up her lovely head proudly and said to her neighbour, So no doubt, you see, none go without observing me while I perceive that very few seem to take any note of you. Ooh, ouch! That rose has sharp thorns. You might think that that was quite a stinging thing to say. But the rose was surprised when the pigweed failed to hang her humble head in shame. Instead, she replied with the following self-assured speech. Sweet Rose, you are more pleasing to the eye. That is a fact I do not deny. But listen up. When your beauty's gone, my humble flowers keep shining on. Less exquisite they longer last. Unchanged I'm glad when yours are past. So when all that matters is said and done, my affections have stayed the course and won. For love is the rosebud of an hour, while loyalty is the everlasting flower. Hey, good comeback! A pigweed she might be, but it turned out that she was as proud as a rose in her own sweet way. Because beauty doesn't last. True love, loyalty and faithful friendship are more valuable than looks. And I'm delighted to dedicate this episode to Cecilia Gonzalez Jimenez, age 13 who kindly supports Story Nori. Thank you so much, Cecilia. It's really generous of you. We hope you enjoyed these stories about the rose. From me, Jana at StoryNori.com Happy Valentine's! <laughs>